I just made $5,000 this morning with a stock trading strategy that I wanna explain in this video. Well, it was actually a couple mornings ago, but the morning of this screen recording. I've been consistently using it for the last year or so, but this particular trade is just so clean and simple that it's the perfect example to explain it. Right, so I get stuck and have more endless scroll of doom TikTok sessions than I'm willing to admit. And lately during these iPad kid trances that I get into, something that I've been getting recommended and started noticing over the last few months is the rise in this old money aesthetic. I'm sure most of you guys have seen it. It's a certain style and vibe and almost way of living where you don't have any logos on your clothing. You're elegant, but not flashy. Tennis, horses, dressing like Ebon, role-playing as a character from Succession. There's been a ton of just general aesthetic type videos of this popping off, tutorials on how to achieve this look as a whole, as well as tutorials on how to achieve this look on a budget without spending on Laura Piana. Let me cook here, this is gonna make sense in a second. So I started noticing that a recurring recommendation that was being shown in these viral videos as to how to achieve this style was Amber Combi, a brand that was previously deemed slightly cringe, I'm assuming was probably kind of on a decline, but now here it is all over TikTok and the comment sections are eating it up, hyping it up, talking about how much of a turnaround this brand has had and how nice it is right now. At first, it didn't really click for me. I didn't think too much of it, but more recently I found myself at the mall and so I stopped by the retail store. And to my surprise, it was pretty packed out and they barely had anything in stock. I checked online and same thing, everything is wiped clean and sold out. And that's where I kind of started to realize that this might be a stock trade opportunity. Based on conversations I'm seeing on TikTok, I can see that this brand is having a massive turnaround. There's this whole new sentiment around it on social media, the youth loves it. However, Wall Street hedge fund executives are probably not scrolling TikTok and reading through comments. So they'll only know about this turnaround once Amber Combi releases their earnings. So upon having this realization, I went over and checked an estimate of Amber Combi website traffic, and it's been increasing month over month. From there, I checked if they're even a publicly traded company. They were, and they actually had earnings coming out the very next day for me having this epiphany. This realization happened like an hour before market close and the earnings were coming out the very next day. So I had like $10,000 uninvested on a Robinhood brokerage account. I took that, put most of it into ANF stock and then a few hundred dollars on some options expiring that week. The morning of the earnings release, I wake up and sure enough, I'm excited to share that we surpassed expectations on both the top and bottom lines despite a challenging macro environment. The market was not expecting this, so the stock shoots up like 30%. Some of the options I'm holding are up by 1,000%. Between everything, it's a $5,000 profit overnight. And this isn't a standalone trade. I have a few similar ones that I'm getting into that I want to cover in a second, but this style of trading is a thing. And it's called social arbitrage swing trading. <laughs> I genuinely don't have anything stock related to sell here, but after both making and losing hundreds of thousands of dollars trading as a hobby over the last few years, this is like the first thing I found that's been consistently working. So I just kind of want to discuss the strat and get some opinions on it. The whole idea behind social arbitrage trading is that you try to leverage real time sentiment and conversation you see on social media and real life to hopefully identify market moving trends ahead of time, or at least before Wall Street sees them and they're priced into the market. If you would have shorted the Bud Light parent company right when the backlash started, could have made some money there. You hear people aren't happy with what Target is doing. There was a small move in the stock there you could have taken advantage of. I first found out that this is a thing and that there's a term for this style of trading from the Dumb Money Life podcast where these three guys turned 30,000 into 30 million using a similar strategy. Capitalizing of things like the rise of LaCroix, just paying attention and noticing that consumers were shifting from drinking soda to flavored sparkling water, which is something I'm sure most people, including myself, noticed as grocery store shelves were now taken over by different brands and flavors of sparkling water, but we just didn't think to capitalize off of it. And that's kind of the beautiful thing of this strategy. You don't have to be a mathematical fundamental analysis genius to notice some of these trends and make money off them. Funny enough, after the market closed the day I bought some of the ANF stock, I actually saw a tweet from Chris talking about this same exact trade when it was already too late to buy in, which I'm sure there's a lesson somewhere in that to be careful as to who you listen to and what you fill your mind with, since because of listening to these people, 
whole talk on this podcast, I started having a similar thought process in regards to certain things as they did. But anyways, if you think about it, this is like the only or one of the only edges you can have on these massive Wall Street hedge funds. The people working there are smarter than us, better data, better strategies, hundreds of the smartest analysts and algorithms working for them. I mean, who knows what kind of AI they're using right now. However, they likely don't have as up to date of an idea of what your age group and demographic is currently thinking, what they're currently interested in, what kind of things they're considering purchasing. Outside of having like some insider information, how would Wall Street know that Amber Combi is having this huge sentiment shift on social media? After the earnings come out and they see the data, they now know. But I doubt these Wall Street hedge fund executives are sitting there and looking at comments from our for you page and so the core of the strategy is that you can use your understanding of culture sentiment and conversations on social media to predict market moving trends ahead of time once you spot the early stages of a sentiment shift or a trend, you can then start looking for publicly traded companies that would benefit off of this trend. It's not always as simple and direct as the ANF trade. For example, an interesting, more indirect one that I saw was buying stock in the company behind Elmer's Glue when the whole DIY slime making craze took over the internet. At that point, there weren't really any publicly traded companies that would directly profit off of the trend. However, Elmer's Glue was a main ingredient in the slime making process. But once you find an idea that you wanna execute on, you do wanna see if you can back up your hunch or particular trend with at least some data, be it as simple as estimated web traffic, Google search volume, or seeing everything out of stock on a website or retail store shelf. From there, I decide if it makes more sense for me to just buy the actual stock itself, or if I should buy some stock options behind the stock if I'm expecting a certain catalyst or event to take place. Now, I've personally had the most success with this when I wouldn't force these trades but rather get into a mindset where I'm vigilant and receptive to these different events and opportunities and trends that I see pop up in my everyday life and as I'm scrolling through social media. Another easy example was like a few months ago, there was a sting operation done on this vaccine company that painted them in a really negative light. And I just so happened to see a video of this sting operation pretty early on on Twitter. And the replies I was seeing to this video were pretty insane. I could definitely see how somebody who was once a supporter of this company would switch sides upon viewing this video, potentially further shifting the negative sentiment towards this company. So right there and then I was able to make some money by just buying some puts and betting on this company going down. I didn't necessarily force anything or seek this information out as much as I just reacted to the sentiment that I saw. Adobe just released their new AI generative fill Photoshop feature and everyone's talking about it on Twitter. It's even spilling into some viral TikTok. People are amazed talking about how the development of this one feature will end graphic design careers. I tried it out and it's actually pretty nice. So I got into an Adobe stock trade. It's been going pretty well, although I'm not sure that it's gonna be reflected in these upcoming earnings. Another trade I'm in that's slightly a wild card, but it's fairly similar to the Amber Combi one is a pretty old watch holding company. Over the last few months and even over the last couple of years, watch content has seen a significant uptrend on social media with TikTok creators going from zero to a seven figure follower count in just months in what I presumed was a pretty small niche. And same thing with watch content on YouTube. There's watch videos getting millions and millions of views. It's not a new concept, but there have been a few particular watches that a lot of people on social media have been talking about. Tissot released a few models that TikTok is absolutely eating up, and the same goes with some Omega models. Both of these two brands, as well as a few others, are owned by the same Swiss company called the Swatch Group, stock ticker SW... Gay. I found myself at a jewelry shop recently, so I asked about some of these specific models and I was told that they're hot sellers. A similar stock, the Citizen Watch Company, has had rallies after both of their two most recent earnings and I haven't really seen them talked about the way I see conversations about brands that the Swatch Group owns. But SW Gay only reports earnings twice a year, so we'll see how this one plays out towards the end of July. Let me know what you think of the strategy in the comments below as well as if you have any interesting trade ideas yourself. Exploiting subscribers for trade ideas. Ideas prank. Gotcha.